with a lot of issues in the church is people, you know, have this idea of why should we care? I mean, it's not that big of an issue. You know, in large parts, it's kind of um, an area of, of just ignore it till it goes away. Um, I mean, honestly. Uh, so, <clears throat> what are what two beliefs are foundational for distinguishing cults from the church? On all our talks on the cults, I, I said two specific things that, that were foundational that separated us from the cult. Yes, the Trinity. We believe in the God who is a triune being. Yes. And salvation. Yes, that salvation is through Jesus Christ and not through... Um, Salvation is through Jesus Christ by, by, by grace, basically, not through our works or anything that we could ever do. Um, and in Romans um, chapter 10, um, it talks about this. Verse 13 through 15 says, excuse me, For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. How then will they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how are they to believe in him of whom they have never heard? And how are they to hear without someone preaching? And how are they to preach unless they are sent, as it is written, How beautiful are the feet of those who preach the good news. Um, and I'll stop there. Um, and then John 14, 6. Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you had known me, you would have known my Father also. From now on, you do not know you do know him and have seen him. So I think that those two passages, I mean, obviously there's a lot that the Bible says on it, but I think those two passages are just kind of a good place to start, you know, with all this stuff that we've been talking about. So, I mean, obviously there were a lot of different points of disagreement between us and the cults that we talked about. But, I mean, those two points just seem to be the recurring theme that everything else is based off of. In fact, I believe it was Ben made the comment, I believe, when he was talking about Mormonism, that if you don't really address the issue of God, you really – that was you, right? You really can't talk to them about any of the other th issues because, you know, they base everything off this, you know, kind of just spirals out. You know, so you really can't talk about the other things without that. So, in, in a way, these two doctrines don't come by themselves. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. These two doctrines are important, but it seems like they're always surrounded by the other ones. Your view of these two things will uh, cause a view of something else. So, are some doctrines then unnecessary or unimportant? Why does the Bible mention them? And let's take the first question, because... I don't want to break this down into more manageable pieces. Are some doctrines unnecessary or unimportant? Uh oh, Gracie's got a smile. <laughs> I want to say no. Okay, why? No. Do you want me to come back to you? Um, well, it's just, what I'm thinking is, if God put it in the Bible, then it was important enough for us to, you know, okay. the Okay, so what about doctrines that aren't necessarily in the Bible? Like, um, predestination. Okay, there's one. Well, if they're not in the Bible, then you say they're important enough to follow. Okay. Oh, okay. Okay. I mean, like, if they're not in the Bible, it's just stuff we made up, right? Off of, like, well, not necessarily. We saw here and there and well, we put two and two together. but in a large part, um, in a large part, that's what everybody does for something. I mean, for instance, yeah. Trinity is never mentioned in the Bible, but it shows as an example of the Trinity. So we start teaching a doctrine based off of that. <coughs> but didn't we just put a word to it? Well, yeah, but that's what exactly what they what people do with predestination, too. See what I mean? Um, we just kind of developed ideas around passages that seem to be implying that. Does that make sense? I'm trying not to overcomplicate this. I'm just trying to cause some discussion, but it's really not causing that much discussion, is it? <laughs> it, it makes sense, but, like, so predestination. Okay. I, 
I think people, there's nowhere in the Bible that clearly says, just like the Trinity, mm-hmm. nowhere in the Bible says you are going to do this no matter what. Okay. With the Trinity, it shows God the Father, God the Holy Spirit, and Jesus, all yeah. three. Mm-hmm. So there's some things that are unclear and there's some things aren't. And I think the things okay. that are unclear, we should kind of stay away from. Okay. Are there places in the Bible that discuss predestination when you look at it in the context? Or is this something somebody has to go kind of take things out well, of context and build it in their own mind to make that? We do that all the time. Well, yes and no, though. Um, predestination isn't mentioned. Yes, it is mentioned, uh, but not necessarily to the extent of things that you do, per se, being predestined, just salvation being predestined or not being predestined. Okay. So... So kind of. I would have to say that something like that, that we kind of have to draw our own conclusions from, and we don't have any, like, hard evidence of it in the Bible. These are just things that we... Okay. I, I think that that's important to look at as, you know, whether it's necessary or not. Okay, so let's... I feel like if God did not direct, give us direction in it, mm-hmm. you know, like, in the Bible, obviously... It talks a lot about, you know, the Trinity just because we gave a name to it. It discusses it all throughout the Bible, you know, where, where other things are just kind of, you're just kind of left to draw your own conclusions, you know. You okay. Have to do that, if you have to do that, I would say, is this really necessary? Okay, but let me kind of try and my very hardest to throw a monkey wrench in, in here. <laughs> Please let this be a monkey wrench. The Jews had the same Bible, and they came to the conclusion that God was not a triune being. Because they thought it was too vague, okay? Now, I'm not saying that's the reasoning for them, but I'm just saying it, they thought it was vague. And well, once again, though, I mean, they thought it was too vague. Well, that's kind of where we need the direction of the Holy Spirit. If we're if we're if we're seeking out direction and we have a discerning spirit, which the Bible tells us that we need to have, you know, a discerning spirit, then we should be able to. But how can we how can we know for sure that we're that we're putting separation between a discerning spirit and simply our own opinion of something that is getting the better of us? We have to continue to seek God's direction. In but at the end of the day, what do we have besides that feeling within our own self? So that's what I'm getting at. What do we have past the feeling? As well, if you don't, I mean, if it's not, I guess I have to just agree with Gracie, you know, if it's not in the Bible, you know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. if it's not made clear in the Bible. Okay. And and I think that I don't know how they can say that that's so vague. Mm-hmm. Because to me, I look at that and I think that's not vague. It's not vague at all. You're a Protestant. You would say that. <laughs> <laughs> like you, you even teaches Michael, scripture interprets scripture. Uh-huh. And with the Jews, well, they're not Christians, so we shouldn't be looking at what they believe because. Well, okay. Well, then, let me kind of redirect this real quick because I, I really like how it's developing. So let's reel it back to the main question. Are there then unnecessary doctrines out there? Yes. Okay, so we have a yes now. Okay. Oh, you said are there okay. unnecessary doctrines out there? Yeah, are there, are some okay, doctrines okay. unnecessary? Let me let me redo my an- answer. Doctrines in the Bible? No. Doctrines that people make up? Yes. Okay. And how do you distinguish the two? I I, hmm. I think that anything yes. other than those two doctrines of salvation and the Trinity are unnecessary and they. And okay. Can all be. All right. You can have so we have a yes are unnecessary. So okay, let's give it, give this thing some feet. You're gonna be my guinea pig, okay? Is that okay? Okay. I believe in the rapture, and he does not. How about this? As long as it does not affect your salvation, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, well, like well, well hold on now. L- let me let me roll back in with this example here. I believe in the rapture. Okay, so I believe at any moment I could be out of here, right? So I use that as a motivation to stay on the walk, right? But he does not believe in the rapture, and he actually believes that he there's nothing he can do to lose his salvation. That's neither of those things there. He just doesn't believe that there's going to be an end times or anything, and so he uses that to, you know, 
He doesn't do anything overly bad. <laughs> Don't just stare at me. I'm trying to give you a hard scenario now. Come on. Now we have to about this a little bit more. That's not good, obviously. Okay. I mean, whether it's the rapture um, motivating you or what Jesus has done to motivate you, you still shouldn't think that you can't lose your salvation just because... But at the end of the day, what does it what does it matter what you believe as long as it's the fact of what it is? Because once again, isn't that one of those things that's covered in the Bible that you can lose your salvation? Right. Okay. It's stated in the Bible. Okay. It, and and I can even but what but, reference as to where. But what if he's not doing anything immoral or sinful? He just doesn't believe that he can. Okay, if he doesn't believe that, but he's still following Jesus, well, then his uh -huh. then his salvation is not at stake. Okay, so it's okay for him to be wrong, or right, either way, whichever one, if we're assuming that the rapture is right. Yeah, it doesn't, that doesn't matter. Okay. I don't think that matters. If, if he was still doing everything he's supposed to, you know, got the disciple, witness, everything like that, like the Bible says you would do if you're a Christian, mm -hmm. and he just doesn't believe in the rapture, I mean, like, he's not going to go to hell over it. Okay. But... I, I'm pretty sure AG is the only way, though, so I think you're wrong. I'm just well, kidding. I'm like, just kidding. I mean, like, chances are, is he going to see the rapture in his life? No. Probably not. But maybe there's a chance. Uh-oh, she's not a devout know. AG-er. You get out of here with that nonsense. <laughs> you never know. But honestly, like, I see the rapture maybe happening in, like, another thousand years. Just because God's so great. I see happening now. <laughs> I hope you were all ready. <laughs> Just kidding, because we talked about we it last week. <laughs> right? I used that like three times in, a, in conversations this week. Oh, my gosh. Okay, Sorry. So we talk about all the time being filled with the Holy Spirit and okay. speaking in tongues. Yes, okay. Good. If you don't speak in tongues and you're never filled with the Holy Spirit. Then you're full you of the devil. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Right? Like, you're still a Christian, right? Even though... Okay, let me take your example and make it more complicated okay. then. And I want you to wait to answer, because I want to see if Diana, Nicole, or, or Chuck will have anything to say. Wait, we, have, we can't say anything? Until no, later. you and you don't say anything. I, I want to hear if they have anything to say first. I mean, I'm not overly worried about Ben saying something, but... Okay, move on. We're good. Um, let's say... Okay, Ben is that person that Serena was just saying. He believes in the in the baptism of the Holy Spirit. He believes in speaking tongues. He believes in all that. I am a Christian who believes that that is sinful and blasphemous. And so as a result, I think that the, the, that such just needs to be put on, you know, yeah, and, and that that is actually sinful. I believe in, in my heart that that is sinful. Oh, I was going to say something. Yeah, that's oh, right. You were going to say something. I knew you were going to say something. Can I Any say thoughts? a joke? No. Okay, you can say a joke. Okay. Well, it says in the Bible not to do something if your brother sees it as sinful. So <laughs> oh, my gosh. That's great. <laughs> <sighs> the day the Pentecostal church ended. <laughs> okay. All right. <laughs> all right. Honestly, I think... Based on somebody else's opinion, it can be somebody's opinion because everybody has right to uh -huh. their opinion. But as long as they still, at the end of the day, believe in God, okay. I don't see really. Okay. Chuck, do you have anything? Diana? No? Wait. <laughs> uh, I see you, Tiger. Calm down. <laughs> She's after the prey. <laughs> no? What? Okay. What if. I believe everything that Jehovah's Witness believes, except I fully believe that Jesus is God and that I don't have to be part of the organization to be saved. Every other area of doctrine is exactly the same, though. You don't think it matters? Okay. Does it matter, doesn't it? I don't know. Uh oh. Okay, Diana? I'm lost, so I'm going to explain <laughs> Gracie? It matters. It matters? Yeah. Okay. Okay, I'll come back to that. Serena? I don't understand the question. Can you reword it? If, I, it if I believe everything that Jehovah's Witness believes, doctrine-wise, except I believe that Jesus is God, and, that's, and, that, and that I don't have to be part of the organization to be saved, because I believe in Jesus and everything, okay? And you believe that he died for your sins. Right. But every other area of doctrine 
is exactly the same. And, but you don't believe in the Trinity either, right? No, he does. Believe. Jesus is God, so. Yeah, oh, well, in the Trinity, you know what? Let's go ahead and keep that. Let's say the Holy Spirit isn't God in my book. But I still believe in Jesus for salvation. And then he dies. Then I say that as long as you believe that, that's what saves us, right? Okay. Even though I don't believe in the Holy Spirit? Yes. Okay. All right. Check. You, it does matter? No, I It doesn't I matter. Think doesn't as matter. long as you believe in okay. Jesus. Okay. Gracie, why does it matter? Well, can I say one thing first? Yes, you can. Go okay. ahead. For one, it doesn't matter what we think. We can all have our own opinion. But if we say my opinion that the sky is green, it's not going to turn it green. It's always going to be blue. We have to stick to the facts. We can't have our own opinion about things. We have to see the truth in things. So the Jehovah Witness, they believe the different things. They believe so many different things that go against the Bible. They okay. believe things that are not facts in the Bible. But you don't have to believe the Bible believe the Bible to be saved. You have to believe in Jesus to be saved, right? Well <laughs> 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 the fruits of the spirit. What well, the whatever? Fruit, well the you you're you're shown that you're saved by showing the fruits of the spirit, right? Okay, I, I'm curious to see where you're going with this. <laughs> well, the Jehovah Witness doesn't believe in taking care of the orphans and the widows and think, um, showing love to your community. Well, of course, that's only what Satan yeah. would do. <laughs> so, how are, you, how are you showing the fruits of the Spirit if you're not showing love and joy and peace? Hmm, okay. But you're not saved through doing those things. Those are just a result. Of, or, uh, those works to just show that you're right, saved. So oh, you okay. Get, right, so once you get saved, but you don't your have heart's going to gonna change really into the things that are shown in the Bible instead of Jehovah's Witness. Okay, and so if it doesn't, we'll make it change, so right? It doesn't matter, <laughs> right? Because if I believe everything that they believe, but I believe in Jesus, eventually, as I continue to grow and seek after Jesus, the rest of those things I should eventually grow in if I'm seeking. Exactly. And then you will no longer believe in what the Jehovah's Witness believes and you'll believe in what the Bible says. Ha ha! Okay. You did that. Like someone that just gets saved. <laughs> oh, whoa! Take, 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 take. Serena's gonna kill me. Hold on. I have a relative that just got saved. Okay. And um, they are still drinking. Okay. And going to bars and stuff. Am I gonna go to her and say, "Hey, you're doing wrong because you're drinking on the bar"? Yes, you need to. <laughs> you haven't done this. Yet. So as it's written, so shall it be unto them. Just like, just like when Randy got saved, he was still drinking and, and doing different things, but the Holy Spirit showed that it was wrong, and he okay. changed as the Holy Spirit. Uh, All right. And convinced him of the different things he was doing. Okay. So. Okay. So for those of you who said that it did not matter, why then does the Bible mention them if it does not matter? Because we should be changing, we should be growing. These okay. are things that. But if it comes naturally, why does it need to mention them? It'll come naturally anyways. Well, it, it doesn't come naturally. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Just for Gracie. <laughs> <laughs> it does not come naturally. These are things that, as we grow in the Lord, that He puts in us. Okay. Now hold on there. Hold on there. Um, I want to make sure that everyone says something because I'm really enjoying this part. For once, you guys are all the ones talking, and I'm the one sitting here eating. <laughs> Did anybody else have anything to say to that before I let well, Serena continue her rampage? The, 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 the reason the, the Bible is kept mentioning over and over is because a person does not learn from one thing. Mm -hmm. you know, what do you mean? I mean, if you say Micah once, don't touch that, mm -hmm. it's not like he's going to get it and he's not going to touch ever that thing again. Mm -hmm. You have to say it over and over every time he that's true. wants to do it. And that's the same with us. God is going to have to teach us over and over and over until we finally get it. Okay. So why does it matter, though, if we do those things? Because that's how we grow. Okay. Okay. All right. All right. Bible to no, hold on, Serena. Hold on. Uh, Nicole, did you have anything? Because I saw you getting kind of itchy there. I don't know. Like, I don't know how to phrase it. I, I do agree with what you said. But also, like, we learn from mistakes. Uh-huh. From making our mistakes. Okay. So, let's say somebody's, again, bringing up the example of Micah. If you tell him not to do something, and he does it, you know, that's learning... But learning the next time, mm -hmm. it's learning from your mistakes. Hmm. If that makes sense. Okay. So you go ahead. Well, that's why I think, you know, as, as new Christians, you know, the Bible compares us to babies. We start out, we were bottle fed, but God expects, expects us to grow. Okay. 
And yes, like you discipline a child, we have to sometimes be disciplined a lot. So in 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 winding it down to make sure I'm 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 understanding everything. You're saying it still matters for for it to be in the Bible because it helps us to grow. Okay? And because it I guess I didn't get your main point. Just to learn from our mistakes. Okay. Just learn from our mistakes. Okay. Okay, all right. right and what is wrong. Okay, so another aspect of mm -hmm. of growing. Okay. And Somebody had brought up Micah. Snuggle, no, but, you know, no, but no, but what was your main point and why the Bible mentioned it? Because uh, we grow. We're, we don't. We don't. So everybody's answer about, ha revolved around this growing. This stuff doesn't come naturally right? to us. Yeah. This is stuff we have to learn over time. So in a way, it is necessary. The do and the, those deductions are kind of necessary. Then, in a way. You know. Mhm. Mm hmm. Okay. All right. So, not necessarily that they're necessary for salvation, but they're necessary as a part of growth. Yeah. That's what you guys are saying, basically. Do you not agree? Yes. No. Maybe so. Um, I, 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 I don't know if I agree completely because I think there's there's okay. some things like, um, one person will take the scripture that says you need to be baptized in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Uh -huh. Another will take the one that says you need to be baptized in Jesus' name. What's it matter? You know, mm -hmm. which doctrine you follow? What's it matter if you believe in post or pre-tribulation rapture? Okay. You know? So I even that I don't think it's necessary at all ever okay. for growth or anything. You know. Okay. So I think some things are necessary for growth, and some but, things but just some aren't. things just ultimately what's it matter? Okay. All right. Anybody else have anything to add before we go to the next question? But then isn't that like someone's opinion of the interpretation of the Bible? Yeah, it's, it's somebody's opinion, and what's so, it matter what their opinion is? Exactly. It doesn't <laughs> matter what their opinion is, because whatever their opinion is, at the end of the day, it's not true. Wait, well, so well, what's well, your point? Well, well, well no, Wait. like, yeah, that's, like, I'm confused. So we okay. shouldn't be stopped uh, okay. off of the opinion. But you but, like, supported what you said, though. Yeah, like, th th there was somebody at the church a while back that got baptized, and they insisted on being baptized in the name of Jesus. Yeah, yeah. they didn't say okay. anything about Father or Son, right. or yeah. Holy Spirit, I mean, Father or Holy Spirit. What's it matter? Like, it doesn't. The Bible gives us both examples. Right. And some people are like, oh, it's got to be Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Some people are like, oh, it's got to be Jesus. What's it matter? It what, doesn't. Well, what I'm saying <laughs> the things that we see as true fact in the Bible, those doctrines matter. Okay. But the things that people that are led up in, into ter interpretation that people have their own opinions about, those doctrines aren't necessarily important because... People have their own opinions, and at the end of the day, those opinions don't matter. Well, like yeah. their opinion of, do animals go I have souls? Well, no, but people have opinions that they do. At the end of the day, does it really matter? No, it well, really doesn't. But that's kind of what Ben was saying, though. So you're actually just agreeing with him, is was the point that I was okay. trying to make. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> I think she just wants to fight tonight. <laughs> she does. Like she got, she has her boxing gloves on. <laughs> And, uh, okay, we'll go to the next question. Did you have complete knowledge of all things spiritual before you were saved? No. Okay, what did you have self have knowledge about? There was a better way. Okay, that, that would be a, a logic. <laughs> there is a better way of living than the worldly life. Okay. You, you know more about God and how to live in Christ. Okay. Well, I, I knew more right from wrong. After you get saved. Okay. All right. Not before. So kind of like a moral compass. Okay. All right. Is anybody else going to answer on this one? Because I don't want to sit staring awkwardly at you guys while you don't answer. <laughs> anybody else thinking about an answer? Okay. All right. Obviously, no one did. Um, does the Bible teach us everything there is to know about God? No. no. I did not expect all of you guys to be unanimous in this. I think they teach us enough to know what we need to know, but ultimately I don't think we know everything about God. Okay, so here's a question that Scott once brought up in, in class, and I said that we'd get to it later, and then we ended up getting you know, it. doesn't matter. Um, <laughs> he brought up the illustration of the, um, the shadows on the wall. Okay. 
that there was a there, there's someone who's always sees the, sees the the the, the backside of a cave, okay, and all that they ever saw were the shadows. Then one day, you know, they they got, they got in and they were able to see things. They were able to see, oh, you know, that this is actually the substance of, of the world. See what I mean? I'm drastically paraphrasing it, but I mean, I don't think that anyone here is going to care that much. Um, so then the question being, do, can we really say that we know God? I think to be able to fully understand him as much as we need to, we have to be saved. Just reading the Bible, we Wait, So you're saying after salvation? Because, you know, we get the Holy Spirit and he speaks to us, you know. Just reading the Bible, I think we have a glimpse of who God is. But then when we get saved, I think we know more. Okay. Can, can you maybe elaborate just a little bit on that? It's okay if oh, you can't. God's love, asking. for instance, God's love. Well, we can see, you know, a little bit to the extent of God's love because he sent his son to die for us. He uh, showed mercy um, in the Old Testament before destroying um, nations and such. But when we accept him in our heart, we feel his love. Okay. But we won't know the extent of his full love until I think we get to heaven. Okay. Okay. Anybody else have anything to say? Or were you not done? Yeah. Okay, all right. Anybody else have something to say? No? Hmm, okay. Hmm. The rooster is picking on him. Don't worry about it. Um, the, um, so I guess... Just to make sure we're all on the same page here, so we can move on. You guys, we're all in pretty much unanimous agreement here that the Bible does not reveal everything about God, right? Well, because the Bible says that now you know in part, but then you'll know in full when you okay. see him face to face. So apparently there is more about God than what the Bible says. Good answer. Good job. Very good answer. It is. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. I, that, that actually that that stifles my what I was about to say. So never mind. <laughs> no one knows everything about God. We know everything we need to know about God. Obviously, there there was this idea going on in the church that because the Bible is inspired by God and because it was inerrant and infallible, as the H years called it, then how could it not contain everything that we need to know? And that was really hard for them to, to grasp that, you know, A, not everything in the Bible is literal. And B, <laughs> I wasn't there to say that, that the Bible doesn't address everything in life and in the Christian life. It's very hard for, it was very hard for them to come to grips with. Um, in fact, if you go to enough older people in churches nowadays, you'll probably still hear something very similar. The Bible is all I need for, for, for anything. Well, maybe all you need for your spiritual development, although prayer is probably something that you should probably include in that. Um, and fellowship with the body is also something you should include in that. And I could keep on going, but we'll just say that, okay, all right. The Bible is um, <laughs> all you need. But then it also doesn't address other things in life. Does it teach us math? No, it doesn't teach us. Does it teach us history? No, it says some things about history, but it doesn't teach us history. Does it teach us about, you know, everything that happened from the beginning, dawn of creation until Abraham? No, it only highlights certain key things and certain key members in a, fam a long family line. See what I mean? Like, but for whatever reason. <clears throat> so, takes us to this. If you are saved, but live in an accident, accidental sin for years, are you still or were you ever saved? I'll read it again because that was kind of weird and very long question. If you are saved, but live in an accidental sin for years, are you still or were you ever saved? Can you give an yes. A tribal, an African tribal person gets saved, or he thinks he does. And he continues his, his practice of polygamy and marries more and more, more and more wives. And, you know, um, continues to offer incense to his ancestors because that's just the way that they do it in his tribe. I mean, he believes in God. He just follows the practices that he grew up with. He does this for years. Was he ever saved? 
Is he saved? Doesn't it say that if you didn't know it was a sin, then you're not held accountable for that, but then when you find out, you need to change from it? Not exactly, but it says some things that relate to that that I'll look at in a minute. Let's start with the first question. Would you lose your salvation for that? Technically, you're worshiping another besides God, technically speaking. Right? So, but he didn't know better, right? No, he did not know that this was wrong. He didn't have a Bible. He just, he just, missionary came in, talked about Jesus. Okay. He believes for salvation and then still carries on that practice. Does that answer the question? Yeah, okay. I think he's saved. Okay, you, you think he, he, he didn't lose his salvation? Anybody say that, okay, he lost his salvation? Nobody here is going to say that? I'm seeing some maybe faces. <laughs> I don't know. You don't know? Okay, all right. Grace? Offer an opinion? I'm, I'm leaning on me. He's still saved, but needs to ask for forgiveness. Okay. He doesn't know that it's wrong. No, no, once he finds wrong. out. He needs to, I think he needs to ask for forgiveness. What if he doesn't ever find out? Mm, okay. There. <laughs> Let's add some more drama to this story. Great dialogue, guys. How can he be saved when he's still worshipping somebody else? Okay. But apparently, if he thinks he's saved, he didn't have enough knowledge of knowing what to believe in order for him to be all, saved. All he needs to know is that Once he's still following the old ways. Okay. You know? What was that last part? The last thing that you just said? If, if, if you don't know what, what you believe in, how can he be saved? Okay. I mean, I don't understand him being saved but still following the old ways. Apparently, there's nobody just explaining saying. to him what being saved actually means. Okay. Well, now, hold on, hold on. Then what did you say? Uh, all he needs to know is that Jesus died for his sins. Okay. And, and yeah, but if he doesn't know exactly who Jesus is, how can he be if saved? If somebody told him that Jesus was God and that yeah. he came to earth as man and died for his sins, and all he had to do was ask him into his heart. And he believed and that he Jesus believed. was God. Yeah. He, he and he fully that. trusted him for salvation. And that's all he knows. But he did continue the practice because he didn't have a Bible or anything. It was just that one-time missionary thing. Okay, so hold on to that uh, check. Or no, it was Gracie first. Well, if he's truly saved, even if he doesn't have a Bible, wouldn't God convict him of worshiping the other gods? Okay. Maybe. Yeah, I mean, like, there's, there's, it doesn't, isn't there like stories where there's this tribe and they don't even have a Bible, but they're 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 worshiping God because God revealed Himself to them. Doesn't God, the Bible say that God will reveal himself to nature? I mean, you don't have to have a Bible to know who God is. It helps, and it's super, super awesome. To but have don't you, though? Don't you have to have a Bible to know who God is? I mean, if it's not available, I mean, God will, I think God will reveal himself. But what, didn't Paul just say that God wouldn't? He said, how can they hear if you have not gone and told them? But doesn't that imply that God I mean, wouldn't the missionary, have? The missionary went out. He right, but, but only for a one-time thing. But only for one-time thing, and it, then he had to go to the next village, and he didn't have full knowledge of God. He just knew that God loved him and wanted, you know, for salvation. But he didn't know that it was wrong to wrong to offer them since his ancestors. It was a cannibal tribe, and they ate the missionary as soon as he got. <laughs> okay, well then that's probably not a good thing. Check. What were you gonna say? No, um, I was just gonna say like, for for one thing. If the missionary was not there very long, he didn't have time to go into, you know, helping him to see that he needed to let go of. Mm -hmm. A lot of times they go in and they'll get him saved or that, but it's just a first mm -hmm. step, you know. And a lot of times people still, even over here and stuff, they hold on to their old traditions and superstitions and stuff. Yeah. And try to mix it with their religion, with their Christianity. Yeah. Okay, yeah. And they have the Bible. So that's a good point. So what do you guys think at the end of the day? Can I just kind of add something? Yes, go ahead. Yeah, I'll buy means. Doesn't it say in the Bible that the only unforgivable sin is denying God? Mm, it says blasphemy of the Holy Spirit, not denying God. Mm. Oh, okay. So. I just wanted to clarify that because okay. I wasn't quite sure. Oh. Were you going to say something? Okay, so God knows everything, right? Yeah. So, 
if he, I, I hope think, so. I hope so. <laughs> in theory. Okay. If he knew no one else would be going to that tribe, it was only going to be that one missionary who was going to um, go out and reach that tribe. Uh huh. I think, in theory, that God would reveal himself and convict the tribe. What about all the tribes that never hear about Jesus and never had a missionary go to them and God knew that they'd never hear? What about them? See, the thing is, I think we should think that they will never hear unless we go to them. So it will encourage us to go and witness to them. But it doesn't matter what you think at the end of the day. It matters what fact is. I know. I'm just kidding, Grace. I'm just <laughs> well, kidding. Paul said, Paul said, you know, they can hear if we don't hear. So it's in the Bible. Okay, it's fact. <laughs> All right? But I'm sorry. I had to throw that out there. I think, I think God's more merciful. And he's shown he's show it in the Bible that... He's merciful to Even though this the, this guy w was was offering incense uh, uh, offering incense to ancestors. Well, that's just like us. We we're, we're doing something. We don't realize that we're 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 sinning, and then all of a sudden we're in our prayer time, and God reveals that we're sinning in that area, and we're like, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry, God, please forgive me and help me not do it again. Okay. If we're in prayer daily, I think he's you. You, I think, I think in large part, it's hard for us to understand this because we don't suffer for some, from something called third world. Mm -hmm. And I think it's a little bit difficult for us to relate sometimes to how it actually is over there. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. For instance, how do you know that he wouldn't have assumed that offering incense to the ancestors was a way to worship God? Right. If he's, if that's all he's known all of his life, maybe he thought that was worshiping God. Yeah. And also, how much information was he given about, okay, you accept Jesus yeah. into your life? Does he know that he needs to be praying to God every day? Yeah, good Does point. Does he know that he needs good to point. be seeking after God? Good Is point. Is he offering up yeah. incense to God along with his ancestors? So mm. if he's not praying on a daily basis, how is he supposed to really get that conviction or hear God? Okay. If he's not really listening. I mean, because... I mean, I'm pretty sure God does say, I speak, but you, you don't listen. Okay. So then is he really saved? Next week's topic, by the way, is how do I know I'm saved? <laughs> <laughs> Shameless plug. <laughs> Some good questions, that huh? That is a good question, actually, because, yeah, he, he went through the motions, but he did he make commitments. Okay. To the ancestors or to God? Which to, one? to Jesus. Okay, all right. Okay, yeah. I accept Jesus <laughs> I, I, as my savior, sure. Right? It's like when Paul went to the to this to the one people and they were worshiping all these gods and he used as the empty the no name God as God, you know? Mm-hmm. Okay. I think he's saved. You think he's saved? Okay. Hmm. Hmm. Just because of not, uh, not having the knowledge doesn't mean he's gonna go to hell. Mm. Even though he committed his heart to Christ at that moment. Hmm. 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 Salvation is not based off of your perfection. That's the first point. Salvation is never based off your perfection. It's also not based off your perfection after you've been saved for a long time. A lot of times we get this idea, which is the idea that I had for years. You are saved by grace, right? But then you're, you, you stay in that salvation by your works. And if you mess up, if you do the wrong thing, you're going to lose your salvation. But salvation isn't something that you can just willy-nilly lose. And it's not like clothing or something, or, or mud. You know, you, oh, I got some mud on me, better wash it off. It's not like that. Um, d um, but your salvation is, is based off dependence on God. Now, just so that we're all in the clear, there is something in each of our lives that is wrong that we don't realize that we're doing. Just so we're all on the same page there. Um, yes, Jesus? <laughs> um, no one can be dependent on God if they are purposely sinning on a continual basis. However, you can still be dependent on God if you are accidentally sinning. That's the thing. It's purposeful. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so, uh, let's look at Hebrews 3, 7 through 11. And all of you people who were here like two years ago are like, ugh, enough with Hebrews. <laughs> <laughs> Hebrews 3, 7 through 11. Therefore, as the Holy Spirit says, today, if you hear his voice. Yeah. 
Gracie was scratching the top of the answer, I think. If he were to hear God's voice in that. If he was to hear God's voice in that, and he decided not to listen, that would have been sin. But if he didn't ever hear God's voice on that, now I know this is talking about salvation, but it is, it is definitely a, it is definitely a point. Do not harden your hearts as in the rebellion on the day of testing in the wilderness. Now he's talking about when Israel hardened their hearts against God, and you can read it through in Genesis through Deuteronomy is is the story of how the Israelites got started and everything. Um, <clears throat> And what he's talking about is they, they purposely harden their hearts against God. It's I think it says somewhere, so to test him, for the purpose of testing him. I believe that's the wording that, that it uses. Um, so then, where your fathers put me to the test and saw my works for 40 years, therefore I was provoked with that generation and said, they always go astray in their heart and have not known my ways. As I swore in my wrath, they shall not enter my rest. And we'll stop there. So I think that, I think that, that is a key part. If he had heard God's voice... It had been told to him, and he just chose to ignore it. Obviously, there will be accountability for that. But if he did not know, and he truly believed in his heart in, on Jesus Christ for salvation, I fully believe that he would have been saved, even though he was doing something so wrong. I fully believe that. But I'm not God, so ultimately, I don't know. <laughs> we'll find out when we get there. Um, so what if you believe something wrong? you're going to believe something wrong. Just let me, spoiler alert, you're going to believe something wrong. And some of these things are going to be important, some of them aren't, some of them are just going to irritate other people. As examples, animals are equal with people. That's something that irritates the crap out of me. However, I mean, you're not going to lose your salvation over it. It's annoying for me, but ultimately nothing really tragic has happened unless, unless you start becoming foolish with the things that God has given you, you know, and that kind of stuff, or you overlook people's needs for your animals' needs or that kind of stuff, well, okay, then we have a problem. See what I mean? But ultimately, the belief itself that animals are equal with people isn't a harmful belief to have. Um, reincarnation. This is one that could be bad, could be not bad. It depends. If you believe in actual reincarnation, this is bad because you don't believe in, in Jesus for, for, for salvation anymore. Reincarnation. Reincarnation is, is a belief based off of good works that you earn your salvation through a process of good works. If you guys have ever seen My Name is Earl, it's kind of like that. He's trying to mark off the things that he did bad on his list. And there was one episode that I hit, buddy, and I loved it. Uh, th th there's these little kids that, that he wronged, and they said, what if we just forgive you? And he's like, what's this? And they're like, basically, we say that we forgive you, and it's over. And then you just go. And then yeah. you just go. And he's like, oh, I like the sound of that. <laughs> Let's do that. <laughs> yeah. But um, but anyways, um, and that's kind of the difference between – but it, some people believe in reincarnation in a different way. You know, like um, continue a process of rebirth, but maybe I have to be saved again in the next life. See what I mean? Which ultimately I don't understand how you could believe that, but okay, whatever. See what I mean? Like there are different variations potentially that could potentially exist where it may not – but reincarnation, once again, kind of goes right in hand in hand with that actual salvation. If you truly believe in Jesus for your salvation, reincarnation kind of goes out the out the window. But I mean, maybe there is a possibility of having some um, other thing. America is God's chosen. This is something that irritates me to no end. That America is God's chosen people. However, once again, not something that you're going to lose your salvation over. Um, no rapture. We already talked about that, so I'm not going to beat a dead horse. Um, why not live and let live? Why why address somebody else's wrong beliefs? Why? Especially if it doesn't matter, if, the if there are unnecessary doctrines out there. You know, talking about animals being so important and this and that, like, it used to drive me crazy because my mom insisted that her dog waiting for my dad in heaven when he got there. And I would argue with her. <laughs> I'd be like, Mom, stop it. The dog was not waiting for Billy Jesus was, you know, and I'd get so irritated. And, and you know what? It would push my mom away. Yeah. Does it really matter if my mom believed that the dog was wagging her tail waiting for, uh, waiting for Billy in heaven? God actually convicted me of that. Like, <laughs> you're, it, you're pushing your mom away because you're arguing with her about that. You know, like, there's things that, important things to witness to people about. That was not one of them. So why not live and let live with all the unnecessary doctrines? 
Or, I'm sorry, all the doctrines, except for the, the two major ones there. Because it's really annoying, and you need to be right. I think it depends, okay. on, I think it depends on the doctrine that you're, that they are not um, believing. believing. Yeah. Okay. Example. Well, if... <sighs> huge example, oh my gosh. Okay. Syria. Syrian refugees. Okay. A lot of American Christians believe it is not our job to go and help them. That we should stay in America and take care of our own families and take care of the um, homeless people that we haven't been taking care of now since someone else is in need, so we'll help them. Okay. And I'm going to assume you don't believe this. I believe we should be helping the people that are in need. God has already told us that we need to take care of what we have and so if we get a little extra money in our job should we just go and on a spending spending spree well no we should put it up and hold it back for something maybe that god needs us to use it for so if we see okay. a homeless person on the corner we can go buy them lunch if we see a syrian refugee that needs um clothes because they left all their clothes in their a bit in their broken down home we can provide them clothes okay so if someone's on Facebook saying that we should bomb the Syrian refugees because there may be um, okay. Muslims in there is going to attack Let America. me kind of make this a little bit more of a tense situation then. Okay. Michael Jackson once said, I'm starting with the man in the mirror about changing things, okay? Right. So all that I've heard is why you should go do that. Why not live, live, let, live. let them think whatever they want to think. You just go do that. Why not do that? Well, I think I should do it, but I... <sighs> why does it matter? <laughs> because it's not showing Christ. Okay. But, I, I mean, goes... is it your job as a Christ inspector? Well, Serious well, question. I didn't mean a douche. I know it came out that way, but I didn't mean it that way. <laughs> No, but we should be building each other up. I think if But it sounds like you're at odds with this person who is saying this, so I don't think you're building them up anymore. You're just kind of arguing with them, right? Maybe. I'm trying to change their point of view. <laughs> okay. All right, so why is that important to change their point of view? What does it matter? Because if they don't care about the Syrian refugees, then they're not going to care about the homeless people on the corner of the street. And if they're not going to care about the homeless people on the corner of the street... Oh, so are you saying that the Syrian issue is just a means to an end? You want them to care about that just so that they'll care for something else? No, I mean, they have no compassion. God says, I'm knocking at your door, and I'm, I'm, I need clothing, and you didn't clothe me. I needed bread, and you didn't give me bread. Okay. Well, is so, that showing Christianity? But weren't you the one that was saying about God impressing on their hearts, though? Right, and they're hardening their hearts. They have no How compassion. do you know that God's talked to them about that yet? Because I talked about it. <laughs> okay. I, I see no more faults in your, argu in your argument. <laughs> I think that we have to be careful. No, hold on just a second. Um, he, I heard him start first. Oh, I, I was just going to say, I think with the, the, like, the examples they gave of the animals and like the Syrian thing, I think just leave it and don't bother with correcting the person. Okay. I think only when it's a dangerous thing. Okay. Like, um, if somebody starts with something like declaring cancer-free zones... Yeah, then that potentially is going to lead. What makes you bring that up, Ben? What makes you bring that up? That is going to lead in them into the word of faith, which is ultimately a, a bad area for them to be in, can ruin their faith in God altogether. Okay. And so I think when you see something dangerous like Maybe that... Maybe even leading someone to Mormonism. Yes. <laughs> I, I, I think when you happen. see something like that that, that has a, a potentially dangerous... Uh -huh. Outcome, you, you, you should, you know. But okay. With like the Syrian thing and the animal thing, just a little bit. Okay. Hold on just a second. Gracie, hold on just a second. <laughs> just a second. Serena has something to say first. Go ahead. Well, I think that we just need to be careful when we um, are, you know, if we are going to decide to call somebody out on something like we have to be careful that we are not in attack mode because we are defensive about it. But it feels better to be in attack mode. I know it does. But, you know, I've, I've, I've read things that people and stuff. Have, have said, you know, and, and you can tell that their heart is in the right, like, that their heart is in the right place. Yeah. Like they they, they, they yeah. have a good cause. But they're, they're, they're just, 
they're angry about it. You know what I mean? Like, I can't confront somebody because I'm angry that they're not acting the way that I think that they should act. Mm -hmm. I think also... Nice summation! Also, if we're going to correct someone, we need to have an open mind of us changing as well. For example... So, I could persuade you to not care for the Syrians? I mean, the Syrians, not us Syrians, sorry. Different different people group. I need to make sure I have an open mind about it. Let's try to convert her to our way of thinking. For for example... (laughs) Syrians... A couple oh my weeks gosh. ago, I, I, I reposted a video of a, of a cat getting saved, and I, was, and I went on a rant saying people yes, should be did. using their money for people instead of cats. Well, I totally did not see that post. Oh my gosh. That's because I eventually deleted it, because after I posted an apology, people were still beating me up about it, and I already said I was wrong. That's why you don't apologize. It's too late like, to apologize. apologize. Anyway, anyway. <laughs> oh, come on. Nobody laughed from that? Someone came on. <laughs> And they actually use wisdom and knowledge and explain to me different things. I mean, I saw their point of view. I was like, you know what? You're right. Someone could use this cat getting saved to bring God closer to and people closer to God, you know? And it's like... I'm sorry. You mean saved in a physical sense, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. You're talking about the cat? Yeah. The cat, the cat got, he was in a, it was in a, like, a drainage pipe. Drainage pipe. Okay, because you keep saying getting saved, and I'm thinking, uh, whoa, yeah, pause for a break. But okay, all right. <laughs> Needless to say, I said it in a wrong way. I said it in a terrible way. And it was a lot of harsh. It was. It was very harsh. <laughs> and I could have turned people away from, from God, and the people that were commenting at first, I was, like, booming and, like, throwing punches, and then finally when this girl responded back to me, I was like, oh crap, I was wrong. You know, I should just... Don't you that. hate it when you're wrong? Thank God I never have to experience and that. I wanted to keep it up to show people that I realized I was wrong and I apologized, but people just kept doing wrong things with the post, so I... Ended That's up when you say, hey, moron, I said I was sorry for my bad attitude. Just <laughs> <laughs> And so I, I eventually had to delete it, but the point was I was, whenever I read what she wrote, I was open to what she said, and I realized I was wrong in the way I said it. Huh. If only you would say that you were wrong in our fights. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> kidding. Joking. Everybody just kidding. Goodness sakes. So, um, Paul talks about this. What? It's true. Well, tell me more. I will. Bad theology causes bad lifestyle. Yeah. yeah. So, First Timothy, chapter 1, verse 3 through 4. As I urged you when I was going to Macedonia, remain at Ephesus so that you may charge, excuse me, certain persons not to teach any different doctrine, nor to devote themselves to myths and endless genealogies. Kind of a weird thing for him to ask Timothy not to teach, or to stop them from teaching, which promote what? Speculations rather than the stewardship from God that is by faith. So he just said, he equated them as one and the same. Rather, don't 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 stop these arguments from from breaking out because it, it's not causing people to do proper the proper things. Okay. Now, um, going down to verse eight, verses eight through eleven. Now we know that the law is good if one uses it lawfully, understanding this that the law is not laid down for the just. But for the lawless and disobedient, for the ungodly and sinners, for the unholy and profane, for those who strike their fathers and mothers, for murderers, the sexually immoral. Now, hold on. Wasn't he just talking about beliefs? Mm -hmm. See how he connected beliefs with the things that we do? He's going to do it again in a minute. The sexually immoral, immoral, men who practice homosexuality, enslavers, liars, perjurers, and whatever else is contrary to what? Sound doctrine. In accordance with the gospel of the glory of the blessed God, with which I have been entrusted. And then hopping down in 4.11, uh, it says this. Command and teach these things. Um, I don't know why I just put that one. Anyways, it doesn't matter. Going down to 15 through 16. Practice these things. Immerse yourself in them so that all may see your progress. Keep a close watch on yourself and on the teaching. Persist in this. For by so doing, you will save both yourself and your hearers. But aren't they already saved? Yes, but bad doctrines lead to bad lifestyle. Bad lifestyle leads to abandoning the faith. Hebrews talks about that, doesn't it? Mm-hmm. 
Yeah. See? You just connected doctrines with the things that you do. And I think that Paul was completely lost as to how anyone could ever believe that the things that people believe don't change the way that they act. That's just completely contrary. If I truly believe that God is Jesus is God and that He loves me, He died for me and that He, you know, He saved me from my sin. Why would I ever want to keep that to myself? See what I mean? So that encourages us to go out and witness to people in and of itself. And then Jesus also said, go out and do this. See what I mean? Mm -hmm. So, um, that's why not live and let live because it, it, on, on the big issues. On the big issues. On the who diddly stuff. Okay? And God will impress on your heart. Okay? But um, that's why you can't live and let live with the big things. You know what I mean? A lot of the things that I've talked about in this class were not big things. Okay, I talked about some unnecessary doctrines, didn't I? I talked about animal, uh, uh, the place of animals. Remember that? Mm -hmm. I've talked about a lot of stuff like that, and they're good things to know. But I mean, if you disagree with me, you're not going to hell. If you don't believe in the Bible, you're not going to hell. It's just you're going, you're going to do yourself more harm than good. See what I mean? Because mm -hmm. God gave us these things for spiritual growth. Mm -hmm. That's one of the things that irritates me so badly about the Jehovah's Witness is they take the way that God revealed himself, in large part, not entirely, because God also revealed himself by nature and through Jesus Christ. But a large part of his self-revelation to people was the Bible. A large part of it. And what they've done is they've taken that, God's revealing of himself so that people could know him and grow in a relationship with him. And they've completely twisted it to get what they want out of it. So, and that's one of the big reasons why it irritates me so badly. Because that was God's way of saying, this is how you can know me. And they took that and used it for themselves. See what I mean? That's evil. That's like, by definition, evil. When God gives something for a purpose, and you use it for your own means. In fact, the complete opposite of God's purpose. See, Satan has taken something good and turned it for evil. Does that make sense? Kind of like nature. Nature is a good example of God. But what has, what has Satan done? He's brought in cancer. He's brought in all kinds of things through sin, right? He brought, he brought, in, brought in a de deterioration, something that God made that revealed of himself that is now darkened. And so now people still today are wondering the question, how can such a good God allow this thing this, this to be going on like this? See what I mean? The, 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 the work of, of evil is still continuing in the present day. Same thing happened with the Bible. See what I mean? So, how do you help those who are wrong to change their beliefs? Acts chapter 18. First off, you only talk to them about the things that are actually important, which we, so you guys already pretty much hit that nail on the head. But eight. Uh, verse 24, there's this man named Apollos, okay, and it seemed like he was a Jew that got saved, okay? Now, um, there's these two people who are from Rome, uh, Priscilla, um, um, Priscilla and Aquila. Yes, Priscilla and Aquila, but they were kicked out of Rome because some different tests between the Jews and the Christians, the Caesar kicked all the Jews out. And so with them, Priscilla and Aquila went. Um, and so then Paul ends up running into them, and that's where they start their friendship. And you can read about them. It doesn't matter. Um, but here, we have Priscilla and Aquila in the city, and they run into Apollos. And this is what it says. Now, a Jew named Apollos, a native of Alexandria, came to Ephesus. Okay, um, He was an eloquent man, competent in the scriptures. He, in other words, he was a smart guy. He was learned. He had been instructed in the way of the Lord, and being fervent in spirit, he spoke and taught accurately the things concerning Jesus, though he knew only the baptism of John. He began to speak boldly in the synagogue, but when Priscilla and Aquila heard him, they took him and explained to him the way of God more accurately. And when he wished to cry, um, that's not really important for my purpose. Do you see what happened? It was something that actually mattered. And so they took him, took him aside. And what did they do to, to correct him? Oh, you're wrong. No, they took him, it says they took him to his house, to their house. See, see, they made it more of a friendship thing rather than an attacking thing. But it was something that was actually important. 
Okay, so that's the first thing. Um, only bring up the things that are actually important. Uh, two, with the spirit of patience and very gradually. Rome was not built in a day, neither are people's opinions going to change in a day. Eventually, we are going to get Jehovah's Witness in our church. Eventually, because we're praying for that, and I fully believe that we're going to get some converts. However, did you know that they're going to carry over some of those wrong teachings for years even? Did you know that? And it's okay. God will continue the work. You just keep praying, and you just keep, being, and keep doing what God called you to do. God will take care of it. Okay? But, um, yeah. So Rome wasn't conquered in a day. Or built in a day. Either or, really. Uh, Romans uh, 12. And 9... Through 13. Let love be genuine. Abhor what is evil. Hold fast to what is good. What now? Oh, you don't like it? Oh, she doesn't. <laughs> uh, love one another with brotherly affection. Outdo one another in showing honor. Do not be slothful in zeal. Be fervent in spirit. In spirit serve the Lord. Rejoice in hope. Be patient in tribulation. Be constant in prayer. Contribute to the needs of the saints and seek to show hospitality. See what he's saying there? So, with the spirit of patience and gradually. You know, um, yes. since I've come to our church, I mean this church, before I I, I expected people get saved to act like me. Mm -hmm. And then yeah. here, you know, pastor was talking about that we need to treat them like yes. babies. Yes. Like, because we've been there. Yeah. And, and just, I mean, unless you show them with love. Yes. How it needs to be done. Yes. They're going to reject you instead of... And that's exactly what the Roman Catholic Church did. That's why they started losing their influence. They tried to just, you're, Catholic, you're a Christian because you're part of our empire. And then, you know, um, the Christian state and everything. And then they made it a thing where you had to be part of what was going on to, to earn your salvation. You know, everything was about the Pope and everything. It just completely lost their focus. It, it, rather than, let's fellowship with these people and show them love and then pull them in through that. See? And great point, Diana. So, uh, number three, is it causing a bad lifestyle, such as alcohol? I, I've never seen alcohol have a good mix with people. You know, the people who are always saying about how Christians can drink are the people who are always getting drunk. And then they go off and do all kinds of stupid things. They get in fights. They, they, they're abusive in, in, their, in their vernacular. I mean, just all kinds of bad things happen. Alcohol... <sighs> Alcohol turns the most respectful people into complete monsters. And yes, I did steal that from Pirates of the Caribbean. Don't judge me for that. Um, so is it causing a bad lifestyle or prohibiting trust in God for salvation, such as reincarnation? See what I mean? Is it causing something major? So, um, no, I don't have a verse for that. Is it a personal... Oh my gosh! Oh my gosh! Okay, we're good. Um, is it a personal preference that irritates you whether Christians should fight for the country? You know, if you're if you're not patriotic, it doesn't doesn't really doesn't really matter. I mean, that's just something that's going to irritate some people, especially older people. But I mean, well, you'll be okay. I don't think right. it matters. Just saying. <laughs> I'm just saying is all. Uh, so is it a personal preference? Always stop and ask yourself that whenever you feel the need to correct a brother or sister. Is this a personal preference? And it irritates me that's not necessarily that important. What um, music <laughs> oh boy. Don't start on that, please. <laughs> um, number one, two, three, four, five. Realizing that nobody is perfect. Whenever, ever, ever you feel the need, ever you feel the need to correct somebody else, always look to yourself so that you will not be tempted. Always. Judge yourself. See what I mean? Because what we do is we go and we say, you're wrong. With this attitude like, I never do anything wrong. And it's my job to oversee everybody else because I never do anything wrong. That's not the attitude we should have. You should go to correcting a brother with the attitude, everyone has something. Yeah. I'm do I'm saying what I whatever I'm saying, I'm saying it for their well-being. And that's the only reason why I'm saying it. And if you're not saying it for their well-being, then don't say it. You're just going to tick them off. Yeah. No, really no good was accomplished there. Philippians 2.4. Um, I'll read that. Galatians. Philippians. There we go. Philippians 2.4 says, um, Let each of you look not only to his own interests, but also to the interests of others. Okay. 
Well, come on now. I pushed the button. There we go. Um, only as your realm of influence and authority allows. Okay. Let me say that, uh, break this down. I'll wait till you guys write it down so I have your full attention. Because this is actually a very increasingly, increasingly important um, idea. Only as your realm of influence and authority allows. Okay, so here's my point. <laughs> here's my point. That was so creepy. Um, here's my point. Uh, first off, um, your influence allows. Did you know that if you're not friends with somebody and you try to correct them about something, probably not going to go over so well? Yeah. Definitely. Usually, I only listen to the closest of friends that I actually trust. Usually. Like, I'll, I'll give ear to what other people are saying. And I'll take it with a grain of salt, but I'm not going to really delve that much into it. You know what I mean? Like, some people will be like, you can read the Bible too much and do, do, do. It's like, well, I mean, I, I hear what you're saying, and I understand that you think I should be doing other things as well, but I'm going to choose to ignore what you're saying. See you know what I mean? Like, I'm, I'm listening to you, and I, I guess I'll kind of consider the idea that I should probably do other things as well, but, I mean, I, I don't really think this is a problem. Now, if my, if my close friends start coming to me and saying, okay, this is something in your life that, that, that it's affecting this. Well, then I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to listen. See what I mean? And that's my point. Is it in your realm of influence? See what I mean? Next, is it in your authority? Is it in your authority to do so? Okay. Good example. As a pastor, I am tasked with certain things. But some pastors abuse their authority. <laughs> Oh my gosh, the thing that just came to my head. See that? I'm letting it go. See that? I'm a good Christian man. Um, <laughs> I'll use a different example just because I'm no way am I going to be able to keep my mouth shut. Um, okay, here's a good example. Serena has two kids. Okay? She is there. She is parenting. And I step on her feet to correct her children when she's already got it covered. She's already got it covered. Didn't need any help. She got it. Was it in my authority to do that? No. No, it wasn't. See what I mean? Does that make sense? Is it in your authority to do that? Because sometimes, especially in a church scenario, this is a good example of what I was thinking about that I, I have now, that I, I will be able to get through this. If someone in the church does something that's stupid, and the pastor already has it taken care of, and you go and talk to the person just because it irritated you, mm -hmm. Pastor already had it taken care of. Drop it. He already had it taken care of. And it resurfaces the issue. What does Proverbs say? A fool keeps bringing the same thing up. Yeah. A wise person lays low and covers it with love, right? Yeah. Doesn't it say that? So, okay. And so it causes that problem to become a bigger issue. So now more people get sucked into it. And the original party usually leaves to where nothing is even accomplished. And there's a bunch of ticked off people that weren't even a part of it in the first place. See what I mean? So is it in your authority to do that? So um, there's a, a lot can be said about your personal testimony of lifestyle. A lot can be said about that. And as people grow in the Lord, a lot of times what they need is they need a friend, not a parent. Yeah. See, there's this thing called the Holy Spirit. And what he does is he accomplishes the work and other people as they continue to seek after him. And if they if you don't seek after the Lord, you probably aren't gonna hear that much from the Holy Spirit. And if you don't, you know, well, you get what I'm saying. So, anyways, so the testimony of your life is gonna do a great thing. Um, also, the moving and the moving of the Holy Spirit will do something else too. So, any questions on that? Then, no. Okay. Um, without making it a major case, for instance, grounding a, a kid because they believe in reincarnation, <laughs> maybe it's a little bit over dramatic. See what I mean? If my son believed in reincarnation I, reincarnation, I don't think that grounding him would be the correct move to take. See what I mean? It, it, you don't have to blow it into a major case every time that something develops. You know what I mean? You de deal with it with wisdom, with patience, but don't blow it so drastically out of proportion that um, it's just not even fair. Like, I'll give you an example. There was this guy who his kid lied one time. He didn't lie all the time, and, and his reason for lying was actually understandable. Now, he's still wrong in his thing. I'm not justifying it, especially. But, you know, he was young. He was about, you know, seven or eight. He didn't really understand yet. 
and he thought it was a good reason. He didn't see another way, so he lied about it. His parents, whoa, blew away out of, out of proportion, grounded him, grounded him from all kinds of stuff, stuck him in corners, spanked him all kinds. He did it one time. It wasn't like a, 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 a behavior pattern that he was the parent was trying to curb. He did it one time, and because of an older sibling that had done something, they just thought they needed to beat the crap out of him. See what I mean? It was totally unnecessary. They made a, a level one emergency, level three emergency. Like, could have just dealt with it like, okay, we, we don't lie. You know what I mean? And explain to them why it was wrong. But instead, it became this huge thing. See what I mean? Um, without making it a major cause. Case. Without making make it a major case. So, um, anybody, uh, anybody have questions about that? Okay, so we talked about a lot of different and necessary doctrines ranging from, or doctrines, I should say, ranging from reincarnation to the rapture. Okay, now let's talk about one that I've hinted towards. Should Christians be pacifists? And for that, just a real quick, don't, I'm not really looking for anything real deep or anything. Do you guys think that Christians should serve in the army just by show of hands? Yes? Yeah, because of requirement. No, the, 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 well, oh, like, there's okay. that's a thing that, that they should do. To, huh. That they should No, 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 yeah, kind of like a thing that they should, should feel the need in them to do it. Oh. Yes? Oh. Okay. Now, is there, so I'm guessing all you guys think that it doesn't matter one way or another. Uh -huh. it doesn't, okay, all right. Well, then this is going to be less, less of a big deal than I thought it was. Um, murders condemned to not killing. If you remember, after, after God gave the Ten Commandments, he commanded them to go and kill lots of people. Okay, so that's important to recognize. God never said, thou shalt not kill. He said, thou shalt not murder. And in fact, that's exactly what Exodus 20.13 says. So I'm not even going to turn there. It says, that it, that's the whole verse. Don't murder. Okay, the, what he's talking about there is justice. You know, when that, that goes beyond the realm of justice. It goes into pretty much revenge and that kind of idea. You know, well, this person raped a child, so I feel the need to kill them. Me personally. Not told them accountable to the government, not to hold them accountable to the courts, but that I personally need to take revenge on that. Murder. See what I mean? Now, let's get this a little bit different, if it's your child and stuff like that, and really don't have time to get into that, but I'm just trying to show an example of how we take something that is a bad thing, but we make it into a worse situation. So, anyways, um, we are called to obey the laws of the land. Romans 13, 1 and 7? Yeah. Um... And I think that if there was a draft and you were called to, called mm -hmm. by the government, that's something that, that, that you may want to uh, may want to consider there. Not dodge. <laughs> not dodging. Um, I'm not real strong on that point personally because a lot of times people are, are called to serve in an immoral war for immoral reasons. So I'm not totally set on that, but as a general guideline, if you were drafted, you should probably go. Romans 13, 1. Let every person be subject to the governing authorities. What subjects mean, subject means is to, well, I mean, the word kind of says itself, it's you're subjecting or allowing them to have dominion over you. And if you if something has dominion over you, you are allowing it to tell you what to do. Okay. Um, for there is no authority except from God, and those that exist have been instituted by God. And then he goes on to say that therefore if it, you are rebelling against God, not just the government. Okay. Um, so how then do we change the government? We change it by prayer, and we change it by touching even one. I was praying about adoption a couple days ago, and I just. I said, God, I, I can't adopt all of them. There's, you know, there's thousands of kids to, 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 more than that. I mean, there's so many kids that need to be adopted. And he said, but you just start with one. See what I mean? You, you, that's how you change America. That's how you change the government. You, you start with one. See what I mean? There is no such thing as a small community. I had this idea. You don't go to small towns to plant churches because you go to go for greater number. Therefore, you plant in the big cities. Not always true. Although that's a good idea in principle when you're first establishing, like Paul did, the small places need churches too. See what I mean? And there's no such thing as an unimportant person. See what I mean? Even if your church goes to a town of 20 people and only ever saves one of those 20 people, that's one more than there would have been saved. See what I mean? 
So just something to throw out there. Um, Romans 13.7 says, Pay to all what is owed to them, taxes to whom taxes are owed, revenue to whom revenue is owed, respect to whom respect is owed, honor to whom honor is owed. He never said anything about service, but it kind of implies, doesn't it? Kind of implies service. So, task number one is witnessing. However, serving in the army or whatever service could potentially be an open door. For instance, a lot, I, I know some people who went to were drafted in um, uh, World War II, was it? Or Vietnam War? I don't know. Whatever. I, I, I get confused about the draft when the drafting happened. Um, and... Uh, and they were actually able to witness to the other people in their, you know, in their group. So I mean, something good was accomplished to it. Um, especially in such a situation like that, World War II is one of the most destructive wars in history. I believe, if not the most destructive war in history, um, a lot of people died. I believe out of every four, one was expected to come back, if I remember correctly. There were so many people who they never even found the bodies. Like just so much death that they. People, one woman, and true story, um, was still waiting for her husband to come home. She, they got married. He was drafted. They were early twenties or not even twenty when they got married. Married young, and he was drafted into the war. He was shot down, and he actually saved an entire village on his deathbed. It was awesome. It, it, long story, it doesn't matter. Um, well, it matters for the town, I guess. <laughs> but anyways, he died. They have a monument to him in this town. She's now like 80-something years old, and she just found out about it. Wow. Or 50 or 60 or whatever. I don't really know. It, moral of the story being she's old, and she looks really, really old. Uh, but she just now found out about it. So, I mean, that's pretty cool. Yeah. But anyways. Um, <clears throat> I have no idea what my point was in that. Nor can I do math very well. Because evidently I don't know when the heck World War II was, even though I know it was in the late 30s and early 40s, but whatever. Um, <laughs> to step aside while evil men prosper is itself an act of evil. Psalm 82, um, and I think that's one, things that one thing that Christians kind of forget is all throughout the prophets it talks about, you know, allowing these different things to happen. Why didn't anybody do what was right? You know, and, and, you know, oh, well, I'm only accountable for myself. Well, no, no, you aren't. You know, and, and so that act, that in itself, um, sorry, I have to say this because it's going to bother me. You remember when, when, when Pastor was saying the founding of America and he said like 18 something or seven, and then he kept like changing the date three different times. Now you can go and tell him, Michael forgot when World War II happened, when Vietnam War happened, and when the drafts were. He'll laugh at me just as hard as I laughed at him. But anyways, um, so anyway, Psalm 82, 2-4 uh, says this. How long will you judge un unjustly and show partiality to the wicked? Give justice to the weak and the fatherless. Maintain the right of the afflicted and the, and the destitute. Uh, rescue the weak and the needy. Deliver them from the hand of the wicked. I think that that pretty much clarifies that. I mean, I could keep going, but I think that that verse kind of sums it up. Uh, we are expected to answer physical needs as well as spiritual needs. Some people think we just need to go and tell people about Jesus and then just abandon them for, you know, hey, if you, they don't have clean water, whatever. But in the Bible, we see social good equated with spiritual good. Did you hear what I just said? Social good equated with spiritual good. Read through the prophets and see how many times they talk about why didn't you, why did you withhold justice from the weak? Why didn't you do that? What does that have to do with salvation? Social justice is equated in the Bible with spiritual justice. Now, for, for, for just a small fraction of this, and you could honestly make this into a whole lesson in and of itself, but in Luke um, chapter 4, look, notice what Jesus says. Verse 18, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. Well, uh, did you know that the poor is a huge emphasis in the Bible? Okay. Um, he, had, he has sent me to proclaim liberty to the captives, recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. It's very obvious he's not just talking about salvation here. Okay. Now, once again, though, if you go through the prophets, you would have already arrived at that conclusion anyways. So, um, we are not told to be argumentative or vicious. 
you don't have to like killing people. You don't have to like going to war. But, I mean, if you're standing up for the well-being of something, you know what I mean? Like, for instance, fighting ISIS, did you know that that's a good cause? They they finally passed they finally passed um, in Washington D.C. the you know the, the the hot hot air over there yeah they finally called it what it is that in fact I think they did this today that ISIS is committing gen genocide no but you know they finally came to agreement on it um, because they are systematically attacking those who are Christians and this and that and the other thing that that's genocide okay this is basically the biggest threat that we've had since World War II. Basically, okay. People were so com co so concerned about the Cold War and communism and everything. Little little newsflash: we are on the urge on the verge of World War III. Just in case anybody was curious about that, which means a draft could happen in the next couple of years. It could happen. Like don't don't put it past the realm of possibility. Obviously, there are always things happening in the Middle East, so don't worry about it. But I mean, it, this is something that you know. And hey, look at look at the bright side. You women, you can't be drafted. Huzzah! And uh, Chuck doesn't have the health for it, so really me and Ben are the only two that aren't making it back. <laughs> Anyways, um, <clears throat> yeah. So you don't have to you don't have to enjoy it, but there is a certain element of, of you know, you gotta do what you gotta do. Any questions on that? Is there another line or no? Yes, there is actually. Never act against conscience. This I believe was what Ben was talking about. Maybe not, but I think. James 4.17. So whoever knows the right thing to do and fails to do it, for him it is sin. Is that what you were talking about? Yeah. Yeah? Kind of? Yes. But then there's another spot, too. Um, and I'll ask you about it later. Okay, all right. That's fine. It may be completely off topic. Oh, okay. Um, so never act against the conscience. For instance... If there is a draft and you firmly believe in your heart that it is an immoral thing to do to fight in a war, I don't know for sure if I could convince you otherwise. See what I mean? I, I, I don't know for sure if I could do that. Just because, I mean, if it's, your, if it's a, your conscience is telling you this is a wrong thing to do. I'll give you an example. America decides to go to war against Israel and they draft you. And you personally believe it is wrong to fight against Israel. I got no answer for that. I, I don't know. Like, I don't know. I, I I don't know. Remember in Genesis that God did specifically tell us say that those who cursed Abraham's descendants would be cursed. So, I mean, that is something to think about. So obviously you can't act against your conscience in whatever it is that you do, but remember to always um, stand in the need of those who stand up for the need of those who have a need. Okay. Any questions on that? <laughs> and uh, you were saying about husbands, Grace. They don't draft men um, in their seventies, eighties, nineties. They don't. They don't draft them. They draft you. Yeah, I'm actually of perfect they age for a draft. Three, actually, I don't believe so because he's a felon. I think they, they draft only age one boy. Sorry, they take one boy from every I mean, family, like a brother. Uh -huh. And you draft age Oh, okay. Five. I didn't know that. Grace, did you hear that? <laughs> Grace, did you hear that? Um, the, uh, ben was t saying that the draft only happens in one per family. Like it would either be me or Tim or Joey. It wouldn't be all of us. Oh, but what they about? can't take all your sons. And Which confuses also... me because I saw Saving Private Ryan and there were like yeah. five of those kids in the in, in that draft. Right. Whether they drafted or do they all join? Oh, well, actually, that's a good point. Willingly. That's a good point. Yeah. The cutoff age if is twenty-five. Well, everybody has, like, a... What? Hold that thought? Hold that thought? What did you just say? The cutoff age is 25. They can't draft you if you're over 25? Yeah. What? Wow! I'm almost there! Woo! Oh, so Ben wouldn't have made it. I would have been the only person to have gone off and died. Thanks, all of you. Now, what did you say? Uh, if, if you're the only son, they won't take you because you have to carry on your family's name. Really? Yeah. Wow. I need to go so kill awesome. Sam. I'm Tim and Joey. <laughs> <laughs> no, like no, Tom. Just kill Sam. Because <laughs> you're the uh, Jason's son. Yeah. Justin, he's, Joey. He's the last Lewis boy. <laughs> so he can't. He can't be ever. 
That is outrageous. Just boys do not That's lose awesome. this. I'm gonna go with Kim. So one of them could be drafted. Mm. Who did you say can't be drafted? Uh, Jason's son. Son. Oh yeah, Kyle can't be drafted. He's the only. Well, I, um, if oh, if, Kyle if the... can't be drafted because he has a developmental disability. Yeah, that's what I was gonna does say. Does that mean they can't draft Eli? Well, if you're the only son, you. No, they could still take Eli because, you know what, this totally doesn't matter. I'm sorry. I am sorry. I am sorry that I wasted so much time just now. With that being said, um, with pacifism, does everybody understand the idea of pacifism? Yeah. Oh, no, it is recording. Sorry about that, everybody. So on a small scale, on a small scale, we cannot be pacifists. We need to be active in our world to to bring about a change. But it never act against conscious. Uh-huh. I mean, if the government tells you that you're drafted to go, that means you're not obeying whatever God put in authority. Right. What I was saying is, if it if the war goes against your conscience itself. Okay. But that's like that's like saying that sense. you know the government says it's illegal to worship God. You're still gonna worship God. You know what I mean? Well, it's, well they. So five hundred said nothing yet. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so okay, so on a small scale, we can't be pacifists. We have to, we have to, we have to step up and do the things in our community that we need to do. We need to take care of care of widows and orphans. We need to do that kind of stuff. That on a small scale, on a large scale, um, we should also, as much as it goes with the Bible, with 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 our conscience, serve as we're expected to. Does that make sense? So, large scale, and small scale. <laughs> The question of the week: How do I know I'm saved? Which you is were also serious about this. yes, I was dead serious. The question of the week is also the title for next week's lesson: How do I know I'm saved? I don't joke about what the lesson is for next week. Not now. Not ever. Mm, I know. Right, daytime. So. I mean. <laughs> All right. So, were there any questions? I'm going to stop the recording. I have just a statement. Like, State. Something that God has been working on me for a while is. This is a statement about the statement. Go cor- if you correct somebody, make sure it's in a good attitude. Because if you're just going in a bad attitude, nothing is going to be accomplished. Well, you'll probably make them mad at you. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, like. And you'll yeah, you'll probably get mad at yourself. Oh my God. And then you'll have to tell the Yam group about how you uh, uh, lipped off about some cat gating salvation that, or whatever. No. I read that and I'm like, I'm not going to read this again. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Then all of a sudden you disappear and I'm like, wait a minute. <laughs>